feeling not sour. Uh, did I ruin everything with that thumbnail? But you know, but before you like smash all of the dislike button and you start writing angry comments, let me explain. Let me show you what happened. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. If you want to learn with me how to come better at beer and brew it, consider becoming a subscriber. Of course, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I put out a new video and smash the like button. Yeah, and also consider supporting on Patreon or channel membership. Feeling not sour, uh, I wanted to brew, uh, to, I wanted to try the new Philly sour yeast. So I contacted Lallemand and they sent like four little sachets over. So I brewed up the, the first batch. I was going for, uh, I wanted to do like a fruity ale. I was going for lingonberry, but when I went to the store, it was super expensive. So I went with raspberries. Raspberry, you can always trust raspberries. Why am I explaining everything? Let's look at the, 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 the brew day and yes, we're also gonna see how it worked with the... Have you watched that video, the post on a bucket, where I mounted posts on a, a bucket and put a cask which floating beer filter inside? I tormented that with 10 kilos of... No, I didn't. I tormented that with like 5 kilos, 5 kilos of raspberry. So you're gonna see how that actually worked in this video. So double experiment, fill the sour yeast and the uh, post on a bucket with the cask which five kilos of, of, of raspberry going through that filter. Beer also. Yes, I'm all over the place. It's really hot today, like 30 degrees Celsius. I found some shade here. I'm gonna start off with the brewing footage, then we come back and taste the beer and talk more about all of this. Yes. Let's get naked. No, not again. Oh. This video is sponsored by Brewgoat. Brewgoat is a Swedish homebrew supplier with a physical store here in Stockholm, Sweden. Well, the online store is open 24 seven and they ship all over Europe. So yeah, go and check them out. First link in the description. Thank you Brewgoat for supporting the madness.
So here we have her. Look at that. Beautiful. We have a oh, almost one finger pinkish head and love the, the red pink color. It's hazy as you wouldn't believe it. Can't see anything through that. Before we give it a sniff. Oh, oh sorry. Before we give it a sniff, let's look at the the kegging of this beer, really, where I use the, the post on a, on a bucket. Then we come back, taste it and run through the recipe, because, yeah, you really do need to see that. So, yeah, you watch that and, okay, I will wait for you, yeah. Okay, it's time to try to get the raspberry sour out. You can see we have a lot of stuff in here, so Good thing we have the floating pickup in there, which should float hopefully above that. So I have two kegs, one 19 liter keg and a five liter keg. And this will be very extreme trial here today to see if this works. I have some flickering there. Don't like it. Okay, so I will hook up this one to the keg and from the keg will draw off the building pressure uh, with the piston. You could also, if you want to, attach that back to over there. You would just disassemble it here and put an ordinary beer line on and go into there. But I won't bother with that. Um, not worried about the beer getting oxidized that way. In the kegs, they're only CO2. Let's hook this up to the out and we will hook it up to the out on the on the bucket and we're flowing! We're flowing! Hook up the piston, open it up. It is working! Maybe don't know for how long. How long will it take for that filter to clog up with all of this raspberry? It's five kilos of raspberry in there. But I was thinking that we could always like back flush it if we needed. I need to pull the, the airlock. Forgot about that. That's why we're not flowing right now. Stupid me. I'm not really worried about oxidization from here. It would have been much worse if we had been splashing here. Of course, if something happens now and and I need to like leave it there, this would be a problem. But if you are worried, you could always put some CO2 in there. You could like flush it during the way. If you want to. Oh, smells nice. Smells like raspberry. It's not going fast. Look at the color of the beer. Is it still a beer with this amount of raspberry in it? But that's another discussion. It's going very slow, but at least for now it's working. And see, we still have O2 in there. CO2, sorry. We still have CO2 in here. And I will continue to like flush it from now and then. Down to under 20 liters now. So nine liters has gone in so far it's super slow but it's a fine filter there and this is like worst case scenario i'm guessing but still it's going it's going down to 12 liters left from 29 liters so we should be soon be full in here and we will see here in the in the person when beer starts to come so we can shut everything off and this of course needs to chill down and carbonate 
I need to put some gas on it. Nice, that is working so well. Very slow, but still working. No issues. I've been flushing the headspace every now and then with the Soda Stream machine. Uh, I, I did release the RV here, but I didn't have to do that. I just had forgot to open, uh, put the lid on loosely here. Now I'm trying to get some more out of this. Don't know how much we will get out of this. But if it's a good one, every liter counts. As long as it's bubbling, we're transferring over. So, so far so good. Let's see if we can get another five liters out of this. It would be awesome. I'm shocked that that, that filter didn't clog up from all that raspberry. Well, this wasn't, this hasn't even been cold crashed. We come to a stop here. Almost a stop. It's super slow now. So, yes, we can call it. Uh, but I'm guessing the debris line was at 9 liters and now the filter is down in, in all of that debris. So we should be happy for, for that we got so much out of this. One full 90 liter keg and a couple of liters in the small one. I'm happy with that. Don't be greedy. See, there are still some, some coming. Look at that little floating beauty. All clogged up. But yeah, it worked. That worked like a charm. Whew. Awesome. Okay, so heads dying off. All I get is raspberry, but I did add five kilos. When does a beer stop becoming a beer? It's like more fruit in this than malt. Really, really nice. Really refreshing. It is sour. It is sour. It's sour down to 3.3. But it's not as sour as I would have wanted it. Really, really nice. But I want my sour to like uh, feel in the gum. But yeah. It is sour. I don't know why I why I did that, feeling not, feeling not sour. It wasn't clickbait. It has been now in the keg for like two weeks. So maybe it had continued to sour. It's more sour than I remember it. Sorry about that. Let's run through the recipe. Recipe is already up on the uh, Patreon page, both in written form and beer XMLs. Yes, it's a big Dr. Hans recipe book. Awesome. So raspberry fill is sour. I put that in the uh, wild fermented and sour beers folder. I used 1.8 kilos of wheat malt and 1.5 kilos of Pilsner malt and 300 grams of Munich. This is for like, uh, yeah, calculated 23, on a half liter batch, but then I added all that raspberry, of course. And uh, I hit my numbers very well. I, this had a lot of wheat in it. I dug in 72%, which is the normal efficiency I get when I brew on that system, when I do like wheat beer, which drive down the efficiency, really. And uh, brew father calculated for the addition of the first raspberry spot on so i let brew father also calculate for the second one as well so according to this we should have ended up with a 3.9 percent abv beer 
So maybe it was good that we didn't use the lingonberry because it would have been a much stronger beer, much more sugar in lingonberry than it is in raspberry. So uh, hops wise, I did 19 grams of uh, Halita Mitter Fru at 60 minutes. I did use some Protaflock and yeast nutrient, but of course not a clear beer. I, I was thinking that I should clear it with gelatin, but um, one of my patrons, Ben, told me not to, so sometimes I listen. I used two packages of Lallemand Philly Sour. Mash-wise, I mashed this at 60C and mashed out at 76C. And this was fermented at 25 Celsius. Two and a half kilos of raspberry went in at what was it? Flame out. Yeah, flame out. I stirred a lot during the chilling. And uh, after high Krausen had fallen, I pasteurized two and a half kilos more and added that and let it sit. And I did, I did let it sit for like two weeks in the uh, fermenter. Because I found that Fruit can sometimes take a really long time to ferment. It could be a little bit more complex sugars, I'm guessing. So uh, yeah, especially if you are bottling, I would let the fruit set even longer. But I'm not bottling, I'm kegging. But if you are bottling and add fruit, l let it sit on the fruit at least for two weeks, maybe a little bit more, to be fair. I ended up with a pH at 3.3 and an FG at 10.12, which is quite high. It's not high, but it's higher than I expected and it's higher than Mr. Brewfather expected also. But the beer is a little bit sour, but You know, raspberry are, are sours in, in themselves. I would not call this like a, like a sour beer. And this, there is this thing with pH that we also must consider that measured pH and experienced sourness doesn't really line up. And uh, now I realize that maybe I'm stupid that I didn't like nerd into that a little bit more because I, 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 I know that that measured pH and experienced sourness ain't they, they don't line up really. But, but why and how maybe some of you guys could explain down below in the comments. This is it's not about me being your, your teacher. Teacher, teacher, self-proclaimed preacher Won't hold the back of welfare, don't let you stop to bear This is a learning channel and I, I'm here to, to learn together with you guys So don't expect like full answers, I do experiments I do stupid crazy experiments and try to learn from them with you I'm not saying that this yeast doesn't work I have two more searches and I will give it another go Of course it works I have full faith in, in Lallemand and um, I have done my research on this yeast but maybe we need to learn more about sourness because it ain't that sour and it's in the zone uh, where this yeast really should land could get I'm thinking it could get, get around 3.1 to 3.5 maybe don't quote me on that but yeah Feeling not so sour, but still an awesome beer. If you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber. Do hit that little bell to get notifications when I put out a new video. And of course, like and share the video. And if you didn't like this video, feel free to smash that dislike button twice. And yeah, consider supporting on Patreon and channel membership for even more content. Yes, I think that's it. Cheers and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.